I love working with CSS Grid because it opens up so many possibilities to create more interesting layouts. But it does come with its own set of challenges if you don't understand how it works. If you are a Bricks user, you have a really useful new function in Bricks 2.0 that I want to focus on today. And that's the Visual CSS Grid Builder. Let's take a quick look at what I've got set up and let's create something a little bit more interesting than your typical kind of rows and column layout. So I put together a simple test page and we simply have a section with a container and six blocks inside there. Each one of those is named one through six, just so you can see the different blocks. So to get access to the CSS Grid Builder, all we need to do is make sure we have the container that contains those blocks, not the actual section itself, but the container. And all we need to do is come over to the content section on the left-hand side and change the display from the default flex, and we'll change that to be grid. And absolutely nothing changes inside our display, which is exactly what we'd expect. But it does open up a bunch of new options on the left-hand side. And if you're comfortable, you can absolutely get stuck inside you and start customizing and using your own min-max values or FR fraction values and all those kinds of good things. So if you're a visual person, the visual grid builder for CSS Grid is going to become your best friend. To access this, once we change this over to display grid, we get this new icon, click it, and now that gives us the visual grid builder. Inside here, we now have a visual representation of exactly what we see on our screen. Let's break things down a little bit, though, so I can quickly go over the interface, and then I'll show you how we can get stuck in and start using it. So across the top, you can see we've got these various different options for resetting the grid, filling the grid, and using the options for desktop, tablet portrait, and so on. So our different breakpoints. So we can use this visual grid builder to create different layouts based upon the breakpoint that the user is looking at it on. So it's pretty cool. You can get creative on your desktop and have something really simple but fast loading on your mobile device. Let's take a look. So underneath we now have the columns and the rows and the gap and whether we use min max or if we disable this if we just use simple fraction or fr values min max is probably just a little bit more flexible but fr in most use cases will work fine let's set it back to min max though i think that's a better way of working and let's change this over so we're currently on our desktop so one column and six rows doesn't necessarily look the best let's say we want to put this into three columns and we'll say two rows. Okay, so we now have a grid. So we currently have no space between the columns and the rows and so on. So we can address that by using the gap function. Now you can easily use variables inside you or you can use rems and ems, percentages, pixels, whatever you want to use. Generally, if you're using a framework or you're creating your own variables inside Bricks itself, it's better to use those in here. You get more flexibility. For this though, let's keep it really simple. Just say you're not using any kind of framework and we'll say we want to do something like two rem and hit the enter or return and we now have a two rem gap between each of our rows and columns. So now that we've set up our layout, let's take a quick look at the different breakpoints. So we've got our three by two layout on our desktop. If you go to tablet portrait, we have the same mobile landscape, mobile portrait, all the same. The reason being is everything in CSS works from the top level down. So for this example, our top level is the desktop. Our second level, tablet portrait and so on, is picking up exactly what we have at the top level, our desktop. So let's change that for our tablet portrait. Let's say we'll flip this around and we'll have two columns and three rows. Now we've got different layouts for our desktop for our tablet portrait. So now if we take a look at the mobile landscape and the mobile portrait, you see they pick up the tablet portrait layout because that now is flowing down. So if we go into, for example, the mobile landscape and we'll set this to be one column and six rows, you'll see now desktop, tablet portrait, mobile landscape, mobile portrait. So you can see how this flows down and making changes. So once we've made those changes now, we can just click outside here, and that has now been picked up. So if we switch between our different viewports, you can see there's our desktop, there's our layout for our tablet portrait, there's our mobile landscape and our mobile portrait. So everything is laid out nice and neat. But you could do all this with Flexbox. There's nothing particularly interesting here. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not pop down below and click that thumbs up button to tell YouTube you're getting value. And while you're down there, why not hit the subscribe button to be notified when new content just like this is added to the channel. But if you're not getting value, you can hit the thumbs down button twice, as that seems to work pretty well too. Anyway, let's get back on with today's video. 
So let's make sure we got our container selected, come back over to our visual builder, and let's make some changes and make this a little bit more interesting. So let's take a look. We've got the min max being used for the columns and for the rows. So let, let's say you want to change something. You could come in here and just click inside and make a change inside here. So for example, it says one FR, let's change it to two FR, hit enter. And that's now taking up the space of two rows. You can see now our entire top row has become double height. Let's say, for example, we want this to be two FR width. Well, we can hit two FR in there. And now our first column takes up two fractions and the first row takes up two fractions again. In other words, we doubled the height and we doubled the width. So that's pretty cool, but we can do an awful lot more here. Let's say you're a visual person and you prefer to work in a visual fashion. Well, we can easily grab any of these corner handles and make changes here. So let's say, for example, we want to drag this over. You can see you can drag it over and now our layout changes to compensate. Want to make it bigger, drag it down, you can see now that's picking up the larger sizes. So we can visually make changes here. And you'll notice if we come over to our tablet portrait, we have a slightly modified layout, but it's still keeping those kind of column layouts. And again, we can easily change this. Let's say, for example, we want this to be like so. So we can easily use these in combination to create truly unique layouts. It's pretty simple to do. You can do it visually. You can manually input the values if you want to. You can customize this how you prefer to work. You'll also notice that we've got a couple of icons here. You can see we've got these three little icons at the top. That tells us the index or the DOM. In other words, what order these come in. You can then edit this element by clicking the edit option and that'll take us straight back out of here, back in and select that particular element inside the structure panel. Let's come back out of this, go back into our grid. And you can also click to reset this if you want to. So that's cool. You can also rename the blocks inside you. So let's just say this is block renamed. Hit enter or return and come back out. And you'll see now that has been renamed inside the structure panel for you. So all in all, the new visual builder for CSS Grid makes our lives a lot easier. And if we come back out of this and go and take a look, you see all the heavy lifting has been done for us. If we take a look, the gap has been set up and you can change this. Let's say we actually want to start using variables. Well, let's get rid of that from there. I'm using core framework in this example. So let's open that up and we'll just choose a space like medium, for example. And we now have our space set up inside there. Our grid template columns have been set up using min max in this example. Our template rows have been set up. If we select a grid item, you can see the grid columns have been set inside here. So all that heavy lifting has been done all through the visual editor, but everything is still using the best practice. So we can easily go and make changes either inside the visual editor itself, or you can use it inside the normal panel on the left hand side inside bricks, however you prefer to work. So this is one of those areas that I think makes working with more complicated layouts a nice, simple, visual way. The fact we can use this across multiple breakpoints and have different layouts, again, opens up the flexibility without having to necessarily get stuck in and do all this by hand inside the editor. Now, if you want to learn more about working with bricks in this one-on-one -on -one series, you can check out my playlist here. There's tons of great videos that'll get you up to speed with all the core fundamentals inside bricks. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C, and until next time, Take care.